In this short video, I'm going to show you how to program using Java. Now in this particular session, we're going to focus on the Java programming language rather than worrying about user interface. So we're going to create a dummy project which will allow us to create a new class and in that class, we're going to test out some features of Java and learn the syntax. So we'll start by creating a new project. We'll call it Java. It doesn't really matter what API we choose for this. But as usual, I'll try to just go for the highest. And it will create our project. So I'm going to close down the windows. And we're going to, so we need to go to the uh, project window. Open it up. In the source. Form example, and in this package, I'm going to go to a new Java class, and I call this one student. And as you can see, it starts off by creating a simple class template, like so. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some private instance variables. Private string name, private string program, and we'll go for private student ID. Let's get it right. Okay, so I've now got my private instance variables. So I'm now going to create the getters and setters for them. Now we want the name and program to have a getter and a setter, but the student ID is going to be read only, so we'll only have a getter. So let's do these now. Let's do a getter for the name. And return Turn get name, I should say. Return name. So there's the getter, which returns the uh, string. Public void, because it returns nothing. Set name. And we're going to pass it a string with the name we want to set. And we're going to say this dot name equals name. So we're assigning, in fact, we'll return this dot name to make it clear on that one. So I've now created a getter and a setter. This one returns the current value of the name, and this one sets it to something different. So we need to do the same with program public string get program and it's helped us there and we're going to return this dot program and we'll create the setter for this public void set program string program and we're going to say this dot program equals the parameter program and the last one we just want to get her so this is going to be public int get student ID Return this dot student ID. So I've now created the getters and setters. So let's have a go at creating a new 
student object. So we'll get rid of that. We don't need that for a start. So now we can say student stu1 equals new student stu1 dot set name mark stu dot set program comp sci so I've now created a new student object and I'm now going to print that to the log to see how it looks so log dot v verbose um, log tag can be stu and I'll print stu1 stu1 a ah, two string, he's converted to a string so let's try again let's create a simulator to start with let's start a simulator Yeah, the fans kicking him trying to uh, run the simulator. Let's just unlock it. And let's test. And the fans kicking him big time. Okay, let's use the simulator. and there's all sorts of rubbish in the log. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply a filter and we're going to log STU1, so STU. And you can see it's printed out the memory address of where the student is on the heap, where the student object is. So what we need to do now is we need to override the two-string method. So let's clap some of this up a little bit because we've got so much going on here. And so public string to string. Um, we're going to say string info equals. Uh, let's have name plus this dot name plus space program colon plus this dot program we'll return info so now we should be able to print something better to the logs let's have a go let's run it again choose the correct simulator and there we are, name, mark, program, comp, sci. So it's now working. So we now know that we can create a student object, we can, we can assign properties, and we can print it to the log by overriding two string. So now we're going to create a custom constructor. So we'll shove that constructor in here. And the constructor is a special method that doesn't return, that will stick at the top there, anything and the name of the constructor has to be the name of the class and we'll pass some parameters name string program int student id and it's kind of helped us out here right so we're going to create a new student object so we need to call the constructor of the super class like so and then we can just assign the properties. This dot and then we've just assigned the properties. And that's it. We now have a new constructor. So if I go back to main activity. Let's create a new let's log over here. Let's create a new student object. 
student STU2 equals new student um, mark comp psi and the student number. Um, but we'll change that so we can see the difference. John BIT. So I've now created a new student by specifying all the bits of data we want in our new constructor. And then we'll log it. Keep the same tag so we can see them both. Because we've got rid of that one. So we'll get rid of that one completely. And because we've overridden the constructor, the old one doesn't exist anymore. And there we are name equals John, program equals BIT. So we know that's working. The final step is I'm going to show you how to create a class method, a method you call from the class rather than the instance variable. So let's go back to our student.java and let's add a class method. Let me add them at the bottom. The class method is static. Public student make student. So we need to pass the parameters. We need a string name, string program int student ID and then we're going to create a new student object new student student equals new student and because we've already got the new constructor we can use that um, name plus program student ID and once we've created the student return student. So now we should be able to test that out like follows. Student dot make student Matthew Engineering and there's the student number. And now we'll log that. It's to you three dot two string. Okay, and that should now work. So let's clear the logs and let's test it. And there we are, name Matthew, program engineering. So we've now completed the exercise on using the Java language to create a new class.